All right, so we're going to get started. Uh, this is about uh, music and YouTube and how YouTube's huge. Um, so just to sort of put things in perspective, uh, YouTube has essentially become the world's biggest music jukebox, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, Vivo alone last month had, what, like 50 million users. There's about, you know, half a billion people every month watching their, their video, and that's just Vivo. Uh, Billboard just changed their uh, metrics for numbering the, measuring the number one song in the country, and now YouTube plays in, and so all of a sudden the Harlem Shake is the number one song in the country, which is crazy. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, and we have an awesome panel, uh, and uh, I'll introduce myself first, and then we'll just sort of have everybody go down the line and uh, give people an idea of who you are. Uh, so first, I'm Adam Weiner. I'm the editorial director at Fuse. Uh, Fuse is a cable network. Uh, we show music videos. We're like one of the few places that actually still does that. Um, but we also became a YouTube partner channel about a year ago, um, and it's been a really important initiative for our country. I sort of run that, and uh, uh, so we've sort of had some, some crossover, basically. Take it away. I'm Megan Tanjus. I'm the one that does a sexy voice. Um, I'm Megan Tanjus. My YouTube channel name is Tanjus ML. Um, I'm one of the lucky people that uh, gets to do music full time and YouTube full time and it makes a living at it right now. And uh, it's very different than six years ago when I started, and it's amazing. Yeah. It's awesome. I'll try a sexy voice too. I don't know if we'll be able to Get that do sexy voice. Um, I'm Mike Tompkins. I, uh, I'm a music producer and YouTube artist as well. And uh, I'm an a cappella artist. That's kind of what I do. Um, and yeah, I'm also. Uh, Loving the YouTube space and and have been able to uh, do it for a living for the past two years now. So it's great. I'm Dan. I kind of have the just got off a long flight voice, not a sexy voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm from Full Screen, the uh, number one network on YouTube. I run Fan, which is our music vertical, and uh, love our partners. Really excited to see a lot of you guys here and uh, excited for this panel. I'm Laurie Cox, and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm an artist management and development, and I've been fortunate enough to work with some really cool bands like Paramore, KT Elephant, and uh, recently got kind of brought into this world through acts like Mika Kitty reaching out to me for new music for the things that they're doing. So I kind of have learned to meld both these worlds together and kind of find my Great. So I want to sort of just do a, a question, just send it down the line, basically, and that is, you know, YouTube obviously has become this monstrous source of audience. Um, sort of in your in your, you know, array of promotional tools, where does that stand, and sort of what are the biggest effects you've seen from it? Uh, for me, YouTube has always been. Um, there are a lot of people on YouTube that do it, I think, for like money and to be to be recognized and things like that. For me, it's always been about the opportunities. So I have had amazing opportunities because of YouTube, because of the exposure that that's given me. Um, I did a, a cover of a Britney Spears song, and Paris Hilton was like a big supporter of mine who put it up, and then a week later I was on Ellen DeGeneres. And that was a huge like breakthrough thing for me, because I'm from a small town, like that doesn't happen, ever. Um, I got to meet Adele, who had seen my YouTube videos, and knew me because I covered her songs. I went on tour with an indie artist named Ron Pope, because I covered a song of his and people harassed him on the internet at the point that he's like, who are you? And oh, also I need an opening act for a month, so why don't you come along with me? So for me it's just been really amazing opportunities that I wouldn't have had if I didn't have YouTube and I didn't have this promotional tool. And really just fans, the subscribers, people sending out things in a way that's so easy for them to click a button and tweet at someone and they feel so close to the artists in general and people respond on Twitter. I mean, it's, it's crazy how you get contact with people you never would have been able to before. Um, so YouTube for me has just been great in the way of connecting with people and giving me really cool opportunities that are pushing my career forward, forward and, uh, and I think make people take me a little bit more seriously as an artist. <laughs> um, YouTube for me has been uh, it's been such a crazy ride because I as I said like I started out as a, uh, as a music producer um, and that's what my plan was in life. I didn't want to be an artist. I didn't, that wasn't my plan. Um, and it just kind of, it just happened. Like I, I made, a, made a video, a couple videos of me just making like covers of songs of just my voice and my mouth. Like basically like beatboxing in there and my voice. And um, it was, and I kind of came at it from like the producer route. Like I wanted to like put myself as a producer and, and songwriter. And it turned into this whole thing where it was like, um, I was starting to develop as an artist, just kind of like really organically, and, and YouTube and, and the fans and the people who are watching my videos kind of helped help that, and, and I 
continue to develop that and continue to help mold me as an artist now, which is like was never was never in my plan, but just kind of happened. And uh, I don't even know if that answers the question. <laughs> no, it's good. But that is that's my. Answer. So what happens is you just go on these long yeah. tangents. <laughs> So I'm a little bit different. I'm not an artist myself. I can't sing, can't play any instruments, so I can kind of just speak for our partners. But YouTube is really interesting because it's kind of changed the relationship between artists and the labels, actually. So it used to be that it was incredibly hard to have your music um, or your art heard by anyone unless someone at a label found you and said, hey, you're worth putting up on the radio or hey, you're worth developing. But now you, know, you control your audience. You can put up whatever music you want. You can define who you are as a musician, and the tables have turned because music or the labels are now coming to you and they're saying, hey, I love what you do, I love the audience you develop, let's work together, and now suddenly the artists have power over the labels, and I think to me that's the most interesting thing that YouTube has done thus far. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think YouTube, to me, has two facets. One is for people in the industry, it's saving a whole lot of time and money where you know, everybody's kind of scouring and looking and, and the camera is not static, you know, as it was with like MySpace, you know, seeing things, but YouTube gives you a real um, relationship ability to be able to see something. And I think for the artist, um, for me, for YouTube to an artist is a surrogate in a way that if you're truly an artist, it gives you the ability early on to be able to not have to get out and you know, lose money going from here to there, playing in venues where you don't know if anybody's going to show up, but you can be treated as replacing that and, and really treating that as an opportunity to perform for people, even if it's two or three or whatever. It's a way to really hone in your craft and really um, replace that live experience. And if you approach it that way, the fans are going to feel that way. So. Cool. And I think we have some late additions. Yep. <laughs> you guys. Matt and guys too? Yes. What's up? Welcome. Yo. They didn't tell us where it was. Um, well, you guys are coming in at the exact right time. Can you first tell everybody a little bit about who you are? Yeah, so uh, this is Mozzie. I'm Matt. We met in high school, like, I don't even know how many years ago. Um, but we were on the founding team at Ustream when I was about 19 and Mozzie was 17. And most of you guys have probably seen Ustream. It's basically, you do live video. Back in the day, nobody knew what that was. They thought it was for porn, and we had to go explain to everyone that, no, if you go on live video, it's actually really engaging, and it's one of the most powerful things you can do to communicate with your fans. Um, we were there for four years. I led product, which means that I had a team of 70 engineers that I would design the site, come up with what features to do, and then those guys would make it. Um, and then Mozzie did VIP support. Yes, I led VIP support, so I was helping out uh, artists, athletes, actors, people like that use the site, uh, engage with their fan base, use, you know, anything they could do to uh, succeed more using our live platform. Right. Um, and what happened was the people that ended up using Ustream were like Wiz Khalifa before he had black and yellow, or like the White House, or Lil Wayne. Um, Lots of rappers, lots of really big artists before they got really big. And Mozzie was the guy that was kind of helping them out with Ustream, and then I would help Mozzie out with that. And what ended up happening is we got really, really good at managing uh, social media accounts for artists, specifically. Um, so we've been doing all of Lil Wayne's management, uh, or social media, for the past three and a half years. So we grew from 1 million to 42 million fans on Facebook. Um, I got him two Guinness World Records. Uh, the most likes stats. Right, so most likes stats update on a uh, in 24 hours on, mm -hmm. on Facebook stats update. Right. Mm -hmm. um, then what we did is after we were at Ustream for four years, we left and we started our own company called Tracksby, and we basically took all those musicians that we've been working with at Ustream, and we took all these skills of how to build products for celebrities and how to manage celebrity social media accounts. And we started doing social media officially for a, a lot of uh, hip hop artists specifically. And that's what we're doing now. Awesome. Um, I wanna throw a question to Dan real fast. Uh, Full Screen's doing a really interesting thing, making some deals with labels in terms of essentially letting you guys, you, you've got some artist deals where you can essentially like just use their library, correct? Share royalties? Uh, it's for the writers, so they're for the writers, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. 
Um, what has that changed? Like in terms of like, is that are labels now coming to you even more often, looking to do that and have you, you know, promote them basically by having your artists cover their songs? Yes. So I can't really, you know, speak specifically about certain labels sure. or our relationships with them, but definitely, you know, uh, we recently signed a deal with Universal Music Publishing Group, the largest publishing group in the world, I believe, uh, allowing our artists to cover, you know, their million plus song library and monetize actually that content. So before, you know, a lot of people were putting up covers on YouTube and some of them were monetizing them and didn't know they were doing it illegally. Others were just not monetizing them at all. And now for the first time, you can actually make money off of it. And that's kind of one side of the deal. The other side of the deal is, okay, you know, Universal as well as other publishing companies have looked at our artists and really all of you guys and said, wow, there's incredible talent on YouTube that we didn't know about. And we're now kind of working together to find opportunities to work together. Sweet. Um, and then to the, to the YouTube musicians here, um, what are some of like the techniques that you found to sort of be the most effective in terms of growing your audiences? Um, it started off just covering songs, basically. Like the idea, like maybe it's intentional, maybe it's not intentional. Is like basically like trying to cover a song that's popular right at that, at that moment, uh, as it's just kind of starting to grow, and you know, as people are searching for that song, they end up finding you, and hopefully you can try and steal fans from that person's or that, that person's uh, as it's starting to grow. So that's basically in a nutshell. Um, for, for me, the, I did covers, obviously, too, um, and I, I would slip my originals once in a while. Um, I started a series called Request Tuesday because I would get people requesting songs, and I wanted to engage them in a way that made them feel that they were influencing my content directly. Um, so they request a the song, and then I do it, and they immediately feel like, oh my god, she did the song that I, in her comments two weeks ago, said that she should do, and it kind of bridges this whole thing. It makes them feel more like they're a friend. I also do a lot of uh, just other social media. I'm always on Facebook, I'm always on Twitter, I'm always responding to things. YouTube comments are so hard to respond to in the messaging system, I, you know, I hate it. Um, but I, I use all the other things that I kind of have to engage as much as possible and get back to people. And I think people are more likely to stick around when they feel like you're a real person and they're interested in your life beyond just the music. And if they go to shows and you're vlogging that show and they're part of that vlog, they're more likely to go watch that video, favorite that video, share it with a friend, and bring their friend to the next show because they want to be a part of the entire experience. Logan <laughs> <laughs> K is my number one fan over here, just clapping away at everything I say. It's good enthusiasm. Um, and, and Lori, a similar question to you, like of, of the people that you manage, like what are the techniques that you see sort of be the most effective? Ooh, see, I'm I'm come from the music side, so for me, I look for an artist who kind of naturally has that in their DNA, which is a new breed of young people do. I mean, they're kind of more texting, they're more tweeting, they're more doing all these things. But for me, I believe that if you're growing, if you're truly an artist, you want a lasting music career, if you're growing as an artist, you're developing that. I still believe that great songs and great artists will be found and they'll be discovered. And the relationships that they make in the YouTube world, you know, they're key and important. But they're often made because because those relationships spot them because of how great it is. So I believe they really focus on they have the natural ability to do all the social stuff in their DNA. But if you're if you're growing as an artist, developing your craft, and that's what you want as a career, you're writing great songs, you know, becoming a great guitar player, having a great band. Um, if you're growing there, I believe that the rest will grow. So. Awesome. And then to the tracks by guys down at the end. Um, you know, YouTube's sort of just a part of everything that you all are doing. Um, how are you using all the rest of the social media to sort of drive people to actually, you know, hear this music and see this stuff? Well, I mean, with, with the artists that we work with, and a lot of artists we see, um, they'll put a video on YouTube, but they may not be the best at making sure that they're putting that content on all the different platforms they have fans. So that could be Facebook, that could be Twitter, that could be posting a picture on Instagram saying, hey, I just came out with a new video, or I have a new song, um, hitting up their email list. So we're very adamant about making sure that before they release content on YouTube, they're one, letting their fans know, hey, like I have something that's gonna come out soon, like get ready, like be at your computer when this comes out. And then right when it comes out, again, say, hey, this came out. And then for a couple days afterwards, again, saying, hey, this just came out. Um, you basically can't assume that if you say something once that all of your fans know that it's there. And it's very important to keep saying before, during, and after that you just release something. Very cool. 
Um, we're actually already starting to run a little tight on time. So, want to throw it out to the audience? Do people here have questions? As the dinosaur in the room, I have a question about one of my daughter happens to sing also for my birthday because I'm always after her putting uh, singing YouTube up because I love her voice. She said that she wouldn't start putting them up for me. But then when she get, went to sing Happy Birthday, she said, now this is, you know, and she's like, well, not singing. And I'm like, I would have really loved to hurt you. She said, well, that one, really, they, they really go after the copyright on that. And I said, well, I don't understand how they do the covers. And they, that's not an issue, but you can't sing Happy Birthday. So what's up with that? I mean, is that? <laughs> that's or, a long answer. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I think Happy Birthday is public domain. So oh, she couldn't yeah, help. Yeah. Oh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you're getting, if you're, does anybody else want to answer that? If you're, if you're getting big numbers, I mean, there are different ways that you can handle that. One is you can go to Harry Fox and pull a license on something for 25 bucks, and, and you can, you know, if you're selling it or whatever. And, you know, all the labels now have have um, ways that they can help you, or, you know, Full Screen Maker, all these guys, you know, can help you out with those kinds of things. And she's at the place where people are really paying attention to her. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. what you're what you're actually running into is a composition license issue. So she owns the rights to her voice, so it's not her voice, her recording that's an issue, it's the words of the song. And that's why deals with Universal Music Publishing Group and Warner Chapel are so important because those are the deals that legally allow you to actually sing over those words. Um, and YouTube has something called Content ID Melody Match, which will go in and as soon as she uploads that video, identify that that song is a copywritten song and place a claim on it and no. Okay. It's just a match. With the deal that you have made with um, certain, uh, uh, you made them with certain networks, or their part, or maybe it wasn't you, but there's a maker I think made a deal with Universal so that its talent could be able to record covers. How do they monetize it? Do they just monetize it normally and YouTube takes care of the division of the revenue? So, um, you know, the deals, I, I represent full screen, not Universal. Oh, okay. um, Universal signed deals with full screen and Maker. Yeah. Um, I can't speak for how it's being executed on Maker's end, but uh, we're working to execute it and kind of deal with the logistics on it on our end. But you would monetize it as normal, and full screen would kind of collect the revenue and handle the splits between the different publishers. So, okay, so the talent would probably just claim it as normal. Yes. And then that would all be dealt with. I mean, on the back end, there may be, or on the front end, there may be a slightly different system than usual, but it wouldn't be too different than what you always do. So the system doesn't exist yet? As far as I know, I mean, I believe that Maker actually yeah. handles that and deals with it, but don't quote me on that, but I'm, okay. I'm pretty sure that Maker handles that and divvies it out. But no, we're testing, we're just rolling out some. Um, I, I have a question for the audience, actually. <laughs> Um, can you raise your hand if you are either a musician or work with a musician? Okay, awesome. Come find Mozzie and I sometime after the show. <laughs> Very smart. Back to you guys. <laughs> no, sure. Go for it. Okay, well, I've been trying to like start doing covers on YouTube for a while now, but <clears throat> like the main issue I have is like any advice that you would give for um, for how to edit the videos or how to like like which way you want to film them or where you want to film them or. Like what equipment you should use for it to be a good video? I, uh, I, I started out, I basically, when I started doing videos, it was like literally the videos were me testing out how to actually edit videos. So, but I still put them up anyways. Like they were like, I look at them now and like they're horrible. But it's like, it was still like, I just put it out there and it was like just me like just trying. It was like it was such a big deal for me because I was I was an acapella artist and I wanted to show everything that was happening all at once. It was such a big deal when I found out how to actually have video multiple videos happening at once. And so my like fourth video in was like the the video that that went viral, um, and it was the first time that I was able to like figure out how to have like six videos happening all at once. I was on the worst computer, it took like two days to render, but it was still like, um, I, it was, it was, that was me just like literally like going on YouTube, like doing t tutorials, like learning how to use Final Cut and like like spending hours in front of my computer just like learning how to do it. And like, it was just like me just like, just trying, I'm going for it, just like trying to learn myself. 
and not relying on like on like and, and being like, oh, this isn't very good, so I don't want to put it out. You know, it was just like, no, I'm just gonna put this out because I I don't really care. It's it's cool, it's fun, and I'm just doing this for fun. And then it started to develop, and I started to get better at it. And yeah, because I had a I had a channel and I uploaded two videos, but then I was like, you know, these are terrible quality, they're not good videos because I don't know how to do this yet, I'm not yeah. good at editing, so I took them down and I'm trying to start fresh, like hopefully doing this will like give me some tips and all that too. I think you just gotta, you gotta watch the people, like the people you're subscribed to that you love their videos, kind of watch how they do it, the style that they do it in, and it's not a bad thing to try to replicate that in certain ways and find your twist on it. Um, I mean, the quality of videos and music on YouTube has gone so significantly that people are shooting music videos for every single cover they release now, basically. And I'm a big fan of that, and like I went out, you know, I didn't spend a ton of money on the things that I use even now. Like I have a little hundred dollar local booth thing that hooks up up onto my mic. I have a, a condenser mic that's like 150 bucks. I have a preamp, and I go right into my computer. And most of my videos were done in iMovie. Like I'm just starting to use other programs now. So you know, I think that there are ways to kind of work with what you have and learn from the people that you enjoy watching. But at the end of the day, I'm also a big proponent of doing one take videos. If you like, if you if you have a good voice with a good song, that's gonna translate well even on a webcam to people. Like yeah. one of my biggest videos is me sitting down doing a Katy Perry cover and just like joke, like I'm talking, maybe I'm joking around, and I'm just doing it one time through. You, there's no mic, there's no real good sound quality, but people connected with it and liked it and wanted to share it. So I think if you have good content, that can go past a lot of just really shiny video quality and great sound. Um, it will still connect with people. So I, I just take your time and, and grow and learn and, and figure out how you want to do things. But at the end of the day, it's about the content. Yeah, that's what's amazing about YouTube. It's like, there's so many different types. There's like really high quality, <coughs> polished stuff, and then there's like videos that are shot on like flip cams. Yeah. Not that flip cams are bad. Like old, I like I had one video that was like one of the earlier flip cams. It's like really like bad, but it's like, it's my most watched video. And it's just like me, like literally I set, I didn't even have a tripod, I set the, the camera up on like books, <laughs> yep. books, I totally and it's like kind of angled a little bit, but still <laughs> it works. And it's got 20 million views, it's like, it's like. And I think that videos are so, so produced now, so polished that people almost are excited when they see someone sit down with a guitar and, and a mic in front of them and just go one time through, which is how we all started off doing it. Um, I think people are excited to see people sing live and not be as processed. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a back and forth. I mean, people are gonna share content that's really good and that is catchy and like is commercial, but at the same time, if someone finds someone with a guitar or piano singing something one time through and it's really good, they're gonna share it. That being said, I mean, I think there's some really inexpensive, easy way to yeah. increase the quality of production. I see so many DSLRs here, like that camera, that camera, that camera. You can buy one really cheaply off of Craigslist to use and it shoots high quality video. What was that? Yeah. Oh, so you got to hook up then. Yeah, the camera's good, I just have the mic in the hand. Right. Yeah. Can, I, I'm all about going on eBay, going on Craigslist, finding things for cheap, finding things that are used. Don't feel like you have to have the newest, best thing ever, because a lot of times you don't need the newest mic. It'll work on a $100 condenser mic. And just watch their videos and see if they work connecting it to their computer and you don't need the fanciest equipment. I'm, I'm cheap, so I mean, I'm all about <laughs> saving money. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah, back there. Do you feel that um, the YouTube's become oversaturated so much so that it's almost hard to find new acts? I think it's 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 hard in the sense that, like YouTube to me, it's it's not like what it was in the fact that people get featured randomly and you're like, who is this random person that I've never heard of? And you kind of get you delve into this world to find people that no one knows of yet. Um, I think the way that's being done though is a lot of us. <laughs> As we're getting bigger, um, we find a lot of people, and I, I like to shout out people constantly. Like I don't know if you do that, but I'm tweeting constantly about videos that I find of people that might have 100 subscribers. Like, this person needs to be bigger. Like you guys need to know him; he's amazing. Um, so I think it's more word of mouth now than maybe what YouTube on its end is doing. Um, I think that we as artists and people are, that are making content, it's important for us to continue kind of honing our craft, but it's good for us to really bring it back and, and shout out people that are just coming up and are just starting to make videos that are where we were and really need that push. Because I'm the reason that I'm where I'm at is because I was shouted out by a lot of people that saw things in me and, and wanted to promote me and, and wanted to push my music out there. And so I'm a big fan of giving back and doing the same thing for other people. Definitely community and collaborations, you know, joining a network and you know, exploring who else is in that network and asking them to collaborate and appear in videos. You know, nowadays with Google Hangouts and the way you can edit videos, you don't have to be in the same state or country as them. 
you know, to be in a video together. Tweet at your favorite artists to get them to tweet back at you and share your content. Like, there are lots of really easy ways to try and stand out from the crowd. I've had collabs with people that like I'd never heard of, and someone tweeted at me like, "Oh, I'd love to see you do something with this person that I watched that I I didn't know anything about." So if you have someone that you like and you want maybe to give them a push, I would tweet them at the people that you're watching that might have a little bit more in the way of subscribers and views because. Like, people come up to me and they always want to do collabs and things. They're like, well, I only have this many subscribers. The idea is not about subscribers. It's about the fact that are we going to vibe and are, are our voices going to sound good together and it's going to be a fun collaboration for me. Um, as opposed, yeah, I'll hold the K on it again. As opposed to, like, trying to find only the big acts and work with them because everyone works with the same people and it can get boring. It can all sound the same. And it's cool when you can find someone who is up and coming or people don't know. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to keep talking. I don't care. <laughs> Many times. Um, no, I just, I just think if if you like something, be vocal about it, and um, other people will find it. There's a really cool website that I just found. They're from Canada. Um, it's kind of in beta right now, but I've always found. I, not that you made a statement, but I agree in some sort of way with what you're saying. Like, uh, I find it difficult to find like music that's like different and like. And there's this really cool website. I don't really know how it works, but I found it and I really enjoyed using. It. It's called. I believe it's called Wavo. It's W A B O dot M E, um, and it's like it's categorized by like like sort of genres. I don't know how they get different or how it's like moderated in any way. But I found found some really cool new music that I haven't heard before um, through this site, and it's all categorized by genre, which is awesome. I don't know any more details other than that, but check out the site. It's cool. All right, uh, we got the nudge, we got the bell, so thank you to the entire panel, and thanks to you guys.